We shouldn't be using amino glycosides much nowadays given that we have equally effective but less toxic antibiotics. Amino glycosides are associated with significant nephrotoxicity, autotoxicity, and neuromuscular blockade. If you decide to use them, please make sure your patient does not have myasthenia gravis, renal insufficiency, or hearing impairment. These serious side effects occurs with IV forms, less with inhaled forms, and nil with ophthalmic forms. Gentamicin is the most nephrotoxic, followed by tobramycin, amikacin, then streptomycin. Gentamicin and tobramycin also come in ophthalmic form, tobramycin and amikacin come in an inhaled form, and streptomycin also comes in IM form. In vitro, aminoglycosides are active against gram positive and gram negative with zero anaerobic activity. Streptomycin also has activity against mycobacterium tuberculosis. In clinical practice, aminoglycosides are mainly used synergistically with other antibiotics to treat enterococci and multidrug resistant gram negative bacteria, including Pseudomonas and Acetylobacter. Gentamicin and streptomycin can be used as a monotherapy and actually considered first line treatment for tularemia and plague. Gentamicin can also be used as monotherapy in preoperative prophylaxis for urological, gynecological, or gastrointestinal procedures. Aminoglycosides cross the blood brain barrier in adequate concentration and can be used in CNS infections if needed. They do require renal but not hepatic dosing adjustments. Thanks for watching.